Hi, I'm Chelsea and this is Tony. In today's tutorial, we're going to be telling you about selling used gear. Yeah, this can really save you thousands of dollars. It can also help you justify buying even higher quality and expensive gear and show you how to not lose a ton of money on it by allowing you to like buy and sell stuff in a fluid way. I was it can be cheaper at, than renting. I was looking at your notes and it's kind of like how to talk your spouse into letting you buy more gear. Okay, Tony that's Mark. a good way to pitch it. <laughs> But before we start, this episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is the online learning community with more than 13,000 classes in photo design and more. Anyone can take a class, try a project, or even teach a class if they want to. It starts at as low as $10 a month, but you can get a free trial by using the promo code NORTHROP and you can get two months for free. Check the description in the link down below or visit sdp.io slash Skillshare to get those free two months. We'll talk about it more in a little bit. First, okay. let's talk about TCO, the oh, total cost of ownership. Dang, you're breaking it down. The total cost of ownership is what it actually costs you to buy something. So if you can imagine if you spent $10,000 on something and then sold it for nine thousand dollars didn't really cost you ten thousand dollars at the end you laid out a thousand bucks right right but plus some other stuff like whatever it might have cost you to own it like the insurance and accessories that you might have bought for it um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk through a bunch of different like real uh pieces of gear that we've bought and sold and how much it ended up costing us over a period of time Let's talk about the Panasonic GH4, which we bought new in 2014 when we wanted to film in 4K. So it was $1,500. Right. And when we sold it a few years later, we got $850 for it. So it actually cost us $650 to own. That's pretty expensive. Yes. And one thing I found doing this math is that camera bodies hold on to their value terribly. Yeah. If you're thinking about gear as an investment, you're definitely better off buying cheaper bodies and putting more of your money into lenses. Lenses tend to hold their value. Uh, so 65 cents a day for the GH4. That's actually a lot. It it kind of is a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 65 cents a day doesn't sound like a lot, but still 650 bucks to own a body for a couple of years. That's a substantial amount. 5D Mark III, even more expensive. This is a pro full frame camera that we were using professionally for things like portraits, weddings, stock photography. And so it was a, it was a workhorse. This it paid for me. itself, certainly. It, I, I would think this would be a camera that would resell very well, but it just doesn't hold its value as well as I thought it would. Yeah, and it's because camera manufacturers tend to have like two, three, four year cycles for replacing camera bodies. Whereas with the lenses, they tend to replace them like eight to 12 years. Yeah. So lenses hang out for a much longer time. Um, and especially in the past, camera bodies used to have like every new generation would have big leaps in technology that you really wanted, meaning the older bodies just weren't worth that much. So 90 cents a day or a total cost of about $1,300, not factoring in some other things like insurance, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, yeah. but just the difference between buying and selling it. So, Almost a dollar a day. That kind of changed how I think about my camera if I'm just letting it sit there for a day, yeah. wasting money. Lenses, on the other hand. This this was a great investment for us, a big but worthwhile investment, the Canon 500 millimeter F4. So we bought it in 2012 for $6,500. No. Whew. Whew. A lot. That was painful. It's definitely the most expensive piece of camera gear I'd ever bought at the time. And I was like, oh my God, I really got to sell some animal pictures to make this worthwhile. <laughs> got to sell every my car. But, but you kind of lucked out because when they came out with a new model that ended up being $12,000 $12, now. Yeah, the 5D, 500 millimeter F4 Mark II. Then suddenly the older model, because it was more affordable, kept its value. So even today used at $6,800. So we could sell it and make $300 on a lens that we've used so often. And actually we've used it to sell a bunch of pictures too. So yeah, and this one made us money. And the use price will vary based on a lot of things like the condition and some amount of luck, what time of year you sell it and all that. So you might not get that same amount. You could get more. It partially depends on your patience. I just did like a spot check to determine what the use prices still, are. Cause I haven't actually sold it yet. Still, I'm still holding good. on to we it. We haven't sold, I'm not gonna, gonna sell it. I, yeah, I, I love that lens too much. 
Uh, another example is the Canon 400 millimeter f5.6, so like a less expensive wildlife lens that we recommend all the time. We bought it in 2013. It's like a second wildlife lens for $1,030. I bought it on eBay. I bought it used in this case and got a pretty good deal. I was patient about it. And today, if I sold it used, I think I could get about $800. So it would have cost me $230 to own it for almost four years now. Yeah. Well, like 16 cents a day. Yeah. That's a, that's good too. Not much at all. And it's, it's literally still in the, basically the same condition because it's just a good durable lens. It hasn't broken down or anything. Another example is the Canon 70200 F2.8, which was our workhorse lens, uh, along with the 5D Mark III. We bought it in 2010 for $2,100. Today it would sell for around $1,500, meaning a total cost of $600 or a little bit less than a quarter a day to own. And certainly if you were to factor in the money that we made from portraiture and stock photography and such, then yeah, no problem just buying that cost. Um, I want to make a point about the resale value of different lenses, like not all lenses hold onto their value. And in particular, I'm seeing that name brand lenses, especially Canon and Nikon name brand lenses hold onto their value really well. Whereas third party lenses like Tamron and Sigma lenses don't hold on to their value nearly as well. Um, if you compare the Tamron 24 to 70 and the Canon 24 to 70, if you bought them both on the same day and sold them now, the Canon 24 to 70 would have cost you $1,900 compared to $1,300 for the Tamron, but you could sell it now for more than twice as much as you could sell the Tamron for. And ultimately the Canon ends up being cheaper to own than the less expensive Tamron, which is counterintuitive. Yeah. The flip side of that is you could, that's if you bought them new, you could buy a used Tamron or Sigma lens for substantially less because clearly they don't hold on to their value that well. That's so a I, good point. One thing to take away is if you are going to go off name brand, uh, pick it up used. That can be frustrating because often you'll want to get it when it's brand new and there aren't any used copies available. So of course you have to factor in other things. We're going to get to selling the gear. But we've got to cover all of the other aspects. So the other costs involved are the lost interest. If you had had your money somewhere else, could you have made more money? Yeah, not in a savings account lately, but maybe you could have put it into <laughs> a mutual fund or a something and, and made a few bucks. Uh, also, if you didn't happen to have the money to the cash to buy this, you might have had to put it on a credit card or something that could end up costing you yeah. a whole lot interest fees. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be you'll have to do that math yourself, but it might still add up but it's going to be higher. Um, there's also transaction fees, which we'll talk about in a bit. If you put it on eBay, that'll be like 10%. If you put it on Amazon, it's probably 8%. And then uh, maintenance aspects of it, like if the lens breaks and it's out of warranty, then you'd have to pay to repair it. And that's going to be some additional cost. You might also have to insure it, which we do through our homeowners or business insurance. And if you bought like UV filters, polarizing filters, accessories specifically for that, you generally don't get any money when you try to resell those things. So that's mm. just goes right to the top line. So when you're selling your gear, we sold a lot of gear and we found that we get more money back if we include all of the things that came with it. So the box, the receipt, the lens cap, the strap, the manual, everything that came in the box, including the box when you first got your gear, keep it. We have what we call a box closet. Justin and I cry over it because it's a nightmare, but it's necessary, I guess. <laughs> it, it just means you get a little bit more money. I mean, you could throw that stuff away, but each box is probably worth like 50 bucks. And I keep the lens caps in there. I keep the manuals, the, the camera strap, which I never use. I just leave it in there. <laughs> if you don't have those things, when you go to sell it, you end up fielding questions like, oh, I didn't get the strap or where's my CD? And that becomes like a real pain when you're trying to sell it. So I like to keep it all together in the original box. Where's my CD? Oh, yeah, that happens, really. Oh, People no. don't go download it. I don't know why. Some tips for listing your item. All right. So you should just be completely honest in your listing. If there are scratches or flaws or dings on the body or a scratch on the lens, just take a picture and list it. Yeah, actually highlight those things. Don't hide them. Yeah, don't hide them because someone could get it and want to return it. And then you're stuck with shipping fees and all sorts of things, a headache, a bad reputation. Just be honest with your listing. The shutter count, hmm, that's kind of a pain. 
Yeah, everybody wants to know the shutter count, even though I personally don't care much at all about it. Um, they will ask about it, especially if you're on eBay. Everybody will always ask about it. There's no one way to check their shutter count. Camera manufacturers don't make it easy. But you, for any camera, you can almost always find some computer app. And then, like, you hook your camera up with a USB cable and it will read it out. But it's a challenge. It, it, an easy way to estimate it is to look in Lightroom and go into the metadata filter and just filter all the pictures you've taken with that camera. That won't count the pictures you've deleted or didn't unload for some reason, but it's yeah. an estimate at least. Yeah, that's what we've done for people that have asked and they've been okay with it. I don't know if they trust us because the people got, buying our gear often know us from this, but they seem to be satisfied with that estimation. Yeah. If you have shipping restrictions, which you probably should, like you, it's generally very risky to ship something outside of your own country, you make sure you list those. Otherwise, you'll get people buying it and then trying to get you, you have to then relist it. Yeah. So be clear about shipping restrictions. Also be clear about your return policy. Uh, you pretty much have to accept returns if they receive the item and it isn't what you described. So if it has a big scratch that you didn't show, if you said it works and it doesn't work, then you have to accept those returns. So that, that can be dodgy because how do you, you might've shipped it working and they might've received it not working you still, you as a seller pretty much have to take that. Even if you think they took it out and broke it or something, <laughs> what, what can you do, right? You can't prove. So be sure to list those return policies. Let's talk about Skillshare, our sponsor. I've been going on Skillshare and looking at all sorts of things. So they have tutorials on everything that you can imagine, but I've been looking at the photography stuff, specifically a do-it-yourself light box by Tabitha Park. Um, I think that you should check that one out. She actually takes a cardboard box and some tracing paper and she shows you how to make a little in like a little studio for uh, product photography. She's really personable and fun. And she gave me an idea for kind of like a one day craft type photography project to try and it was really inspiring. So you can go on there and look up photography tutorials, they have editing uh, tutorials. Justin found some video editing tutorials that he's interested in checking out. There's something for everyone there. And if you go there and use the link in our description below, you can get a two month free trial by using the promo code Northrop. So I'm suggesting Tabitha's video. It was really fun. Yeah, I and like easy. those tutorials a lot. They're, they're much more structured and professional than you'll find anywhere just with uh, for free. And they have Super. like real knowledgeable people behind it. Like I'm, I'm kind of getting into filmmaking and video production because uh, I don't know. I think this YouTube thing might take yeah. off. Yeah. So I'm trying to learn a little <laughs> bit about it. And uh, there's lots of that on YouTube. But if you go to Skillshare, you find people who have real credentials and skills. And yeah. um, I just find that, that it saves me a lot of time to go through those. And I'm still in my two month trial myself. Me too. So you can sign up for your own two-month trial and, and consume those and see if you really like it. So I have to send you one um, by Elizabeth Weinberg. I have this one lined up. I started watching it. I haven't finished it yet. She's shot um, all sorts of like musicians and actors and all these famous people that you would recognize. And she has a tutorial on editing pictures and just adding tones. That's something I'm really interested in now and adding texture and tones. Looks like it's going to be really good. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth Weinberg. You should look that one up. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link. I should put that down below too. Good idea. svpio slash Skillshare or check the uh, link in the description and use the promo code Northrop. Here's a trick. Here's Not a everybody trick. knows. Sell your body and your lens separately, even if you bought them together as a kit. Just be sure that you list explicitly that you're selling just the body without the lens. What if it's just a pain? And I'm lazy. Okay, that's the big trade-off, right? A lot of this is you can make more money selling stuff if you have patience, but you should also assign some value to your time. So if something takes you an extra hour, you know, maybe you value your time at $50 an hour. If mm -hmm. it takes you an hour, but it makes you an extra 20 bucks, it might not be worth it. If it takes you an hour and it makes you an extra 200 bucks, it might be, that's probably a good idea Here's for you. Here's a math example that Tony Northrup has provided. Uh -huh. Talk us through it, Professor Tony. Okay, let's say you bought a 5D Mark III and the 24 to 105 kit, which a lot of people did. You could list them on eBay together, and the average selling price I saw was $2,000. If you were to sell them separately, you would sell the body for about $1,500 and the lens for about $600. So you'd then be making $2,100. So you would make about 100 extra bucks. You could go to bucks. dinner. 
uh, could go out to dinner a couple of times or go out to dinner once and have a whole lot of drinks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is it worth it for you to package something up separately, you know, separately take it to the post office, separate, make a separate listing for that extra hundred bucks. That's entirely up to you. Um, on the flip side, if you're buying stuff, it's often better to look for a bundle that has even multiple lenses in it and then sell those items separately. Even if you don't need them, like resell them, you can make a few bucks that way. So that's just something to consider whether to bundle it or not. Tying it all back in, this would be a great time to use Tabitha's little do it yourself light box because you want good pictures of whatever you're reselling yeah. and nobody wants to see it in front of your ugly curtains or in bad lighting or something. Having good pictures is going to sell your gear over someone else's. They might be choosing between two. Yeah. And that is one of those things where you putting more time in will get you more money. Mm. Do professional pictures of it and it will sell for more. Take some snapshots on your iPhone and it will sell. But you, it certainly won't catch the same attention. I know when I'm buying something online, I want it to look more professional. It makes me feel like, all right, they took the time to get a good picture. They're going to care about getting it to me nicely packed and on time and... Let's something. talk about different places where you can sell your gear. Um, a kind of our favorite place to sell gear now Amazon. is actually Amazon. If, if you go to and you look at Amazon, of course, you can usually click buy it now, but there'll also be uh, like 10 items used or new. There's a little used or new link there. Mm -hmm. It'll list them on the side too. And you can sell items in there. And what you'll see is generally just a list, usually without any pictures for the individual listings. You can put pictures, but most people don't even bother. So you'll just see a list and a price. And sometimes there'll be a little description, but often not. And it's, you have to set up, sign up for an Amazon seller account, um, which pretty much anybody can do. It's not that hard. And once you have an Amazon seller account, it's really easy to add these listings in. You can even have them ship it um, as if it were Amazon Prime. So you can ship it to an Amazon warehouse. And then when somebody buys it, they'll get it in two days. Meaning they can click like, Buy it now for your items. I love the buy it now button. A but lot of people do. Eight percent. They take eight percent, which plus means... a dollar. What's that dollar for? <laughs> I don't know. What the heck, Jeff Bezos? Like he even needs a dollar. <laughs> anyway, so if you're selling like a two thousand dollar camera, that eight percent becomes one hundred and sixty dollars, one hundred and sixty one dollars, <laughs> which is a sizable amount of money. So we do try to get that percentage down, but. The convenience of using Amazon is uh, almost off the charts because you don't even have you don't have to do anything with it sells, especially if you ship it to be fulfilled by Amazon. Just and you don't have to take pictures money. or even make a description. You just set a price and then you just wait. And if maybe if it doesn't sell after a couple of weeks, maybe you lower your price. Hmm. eBay, eBay, certainly the most popular outlet, right? Yeah, they take ten percent. Yeah, they Plus take a few even more. dollars. Yeah, depending on how you set up your listing, they can take a few bucks. Um, I find selling on eBay to to be a little bit difficult. There's a lot of questions from buyers. Oh yeah, you can ask questions. Yeah, there's there's they will ask about the shutter count. Um, they will ask for more pictures. They will say, "Have you done this and that with it?" Does it? Sometimes they'll even ask, like, "Does it work with this lens?" Or does this lens work with <laughs> like this you're body? Just giving, you're like giving general photography advice yeah does it. it take good video things like that you're like oh my god ebay <laughs> such a pain so maybe buy from ebay sell at amazon maybe you want to be the annoying yeah. person asking the questions but you don't want to be the person fielding them yeah so part of it is the personalities of the buyers ebay buyers are more trouble than amazon buyers yeah and ebay also takes more money and they kind of want more pictures and a more detailed description, like the buyers just have higher expectations. Um, eBay does offer pretty good seller protection. If you sell it and they pay with a PayPal, pay, PayPal verified account, then PayPal will protect you as a seller, even if the person is some sort of scammer. Um, That's good to know. Yeah. And you will be approached by scammers on eBay. They'll try to convince you to take a check or they'll say, I'll, I'll pay you a hundred dollars over your asking price right now but then you realize you're involved in some Sneaks. scam. So that comes up a lot. Uh, speaking of scams. Craig's, Craigslist. If <laughs> yeah. you want to sell your camera and get murdered, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. All right. So most people aren't murdered when they list something on Craigslist. Most we don't people have survive. The final statistics. Okay. But they don't take any money from you. So you don't have to pay any fees, but you have to worry about counterfeiting and scams. This could work out if maybe if you're just selling it, locally i don't really know 
Yeah, you pretty much are. It's a local listing, which is also a pain because you'll get and in all likelihood you get a bunch of questions and then you'll get a few people who come and look at it. And even though it's exactly what you'll describe, they'll like poke around at it and hang out with you for 10 minutes and then decide that they're not quite ready, but they'll get back in touch. Well, are there like. Can, uh, can you just save it for me till Friday when I get my paycheck and then they never come back? Yeah. So yeah. there is some of that. And then sometimes Craigslist, the guy will just show up and give you a wad of cash and head right out. And it won't be a trouble. One time my sister sold a car on Craigslist and they showed up and gave them money that smelled like weed. <laughs> <laughs> just putting it out there. What else we got? <laughs> Personal website. If you do, if you do sell on Craigslist, don't take checks. Meet in a public place and check the bills to be counterfeit. You can go to Amazon and look for like counterfeit detection kits, like little markers that you rub just on the kidding. bills to make sure they're legit. <laughs> they hand you the money, and you're just like, yes, you have to do that. That's that is how people unload counterfeit bills: is they go to Craigslist, buy stuff they can pawn. Why are people so sneaky in this world? Yeah, it's a constant pain. Um, you can also sell stuff directly online, um, which we do all the time. We have a little store. Where we sell books. But we also sell our used gear. So you do have to handle seller fees. If they're using PayPal to buy from you on your personal site, then they're going to take the 2.9% PayPal. Yeah, you still also, cheaper than Amazon or eBay. Yeah, still cheaper. You also have to worry about scams, which Tony and I have been a victim of. So we're going to have a video on how not to get your gear stolen when you sell it coming up soon, because that has happened to us. And there are all sorts of hackers and things, and they can just steal someone else's identity and then steal your gear through your store. So that is a risk that you take. And we're going to try to tell you how to avoid that. But we're it's a long thing. So we're going to save it for another video. Yeah, at a high level. So only within your country. Ship things with insurance. You should ship everything with insurance and require an adult signature, but also never ship to an address that is not the billing address. Make sure the shipping and billing addresses match. Um, if it's a high value item and you want to reduce your risk even further, I would encourage you to actually talk to the person on the phone. Yeah, we'll give them the whole rundown. They're yeah. going to be you'll be around for the next video. All right. And then you can also use used outlets like Adorama. And K E H and K E H. Uh, yeah, those are probably the two biggest sellers. Of course, in other countries, you, you might find uh, different outlets, but they'll buy the gear from you directly. Sometimes they'll even um, sell you a new piece of gear and give you credit for a used item that you trade in. Um, and they can give you very good prices. And it's nice because it happens immediately. You don't have to talk to, you only have to talk to them, assuming that you're happy with the price that they offer you. And both of them tend to offer pretty fair prices. It, the, it will probably be less than you would get even after fees from selling at Amazon or uh, eBay. But I've also heard reports that they will end up paying more. Um, just we didn't list this, but people also sell their gear if they're in photography Facebook groups. Uh, that's a good point. And people have done that through our group. And I, you know, I we don't take responsibility, so I haven't really asked a lot of questions, but a lot of people form relationships in there and everyone has the same hobby. So if you're seeing the pictures from the same guy and you've been corresponding for years and you put your gear for sale and someone that you kind of know and trust is on there, that might be a good way to unload your gear too. Yeah, I would be very cautious if you have a relationship with them and you know they're okay, yeah. then, then do that. But at the same time, that's also a place that scammers tend to hang out. It might be a good way to ruin your relationships too, if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, if that's what you're after. Mm -hmm. It's a weird goal to have in life, but. <laughs> your tips? Yes. What are you doing to sell your gear? Do you do math on how much you make from your gear or how much it costs you per day to own your gear like we do? And and how do normal? you how do you minimize that total cost of ownership? How do you get as much as possible for it? I'd love to hear your tips down below. I will take your best tips and compile them into the description of this video. So I'll list new tips in there. So check the description down below for even more tips contributed by users. Thanks for sending that in. And thank you to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare. If you want to learn more about photography, if you want to check out that Tabitha Park video that I was talking about, go to stp.io slash Skillshare, use the promo code Northrop, and you can get a two month free trial or go down in the description below and we have a link. You can just click it. I'll take you there. Let's watch that video together. Say hi to Tabitha for me. She doesn't know me yet, but she probably will. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks Skillshare. See you guys later. Bye. Hasta luego. <laughs>